Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, John Ogilvie. Thanks for the great question. You asked, how do subway or metro train doors actually work? If you've ever taken public transit in a big city, you've probably stood on the platform watching those sleek train doors open and close like clockwork. They're so seamless, so fast, and so reliable that we rarely give them a second thought. But behind that smooth sliding motion is a surprising amount of engineering. So what exactly powers these doors, keeps them safe, and makes them work with such precision day in and day out? Stick around. We're opening up the story of Metro train doors right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the obvious. Metro and subway doors aren't like your house door. They're not swinging on a hinge. Instead, most of them operate using a system called pneumatic or electromechanical sliding doors. These are the same types of systems you'll see in some elevators, airplanes, and even high-speed trains. In subways, the doors are typically configured to slide open either internally or externally along the body of the train. Internal sliding doors retract into a pocket within the wall of the train car, while external sliding doors move along the outside of the carriage. Some systems, especially older ones, might use what's called a plug door, which first pushes out from the frame before sliding sideways, ensuring an airtight seal. But in general, Modern metro systems stick with the sliding door format because it's fast, safe, and reliable in high traffic conditions. At the heart of many subway door systems is pneumatic power, essentially air pressure. A compressed air system drives a piston that physically moves the door open or closed. That's why in many older trains, you'll hear that distinctive hiss when the doors operate. It's not just for dramatic effect, it's compressed air being released. Pneumatic systems are powerful, and they can push or pull heavy doors smoothly without putting too much strain on the mechanism. However, newer subway systems are shifting more toward electromechanical systems, which use small electric motors and gear mechanisms to move the doors. These are quieter, more efficient, and easier to monitor digitally. Instead of a big hiss and clunk, you get a soft motorized hum, faster and more energy conscious. In both systems, the door's movement is carefully calibrated to avoid slamming shut or dragging open. It's not just about convenience, it's about safety. Subway doors need to close firmly enough to stay sealed during motion, but soft enough to avoid injuring someone in the process. Here's where it gets interesting. Subway doors are smarter than they look. They're equipped with a range of sensors, safety switches, and detection systems designed to keep people safe and prevent malfunctions. Infrared beams or pressure-sensitive edges can detect if someone or something is in the doorway. If you've ever had the doors start to close on you only to pop open again, that's the safety system kicking in. Many modern trains even include obstacle detection systems that won't let the train move unless the doors are fully shut and locked. And that locking system is no joke. It's typically monitored by the train's onboard computer, which constantly checks if every door is closed before giving the green light to the driver or automated system. If even one door isn't properly shut, the entire train may be prevented from moving. This helps avoid everything from minor accidents to catastrophic incidents involving passengers being caught in doors or falling out of moving trains. One of the more subtle but vital parts of the system is the synchronization between train doors and station platform doors in systems that use both. These are called platform screen doors. PSDs, or Automatic Platform Gates, and they're installed in many newer or high-capacity metro systems. 
They help prevent people from falling onto the tracks and also keep things climate controlled inside the station. For these to work, the train doors and the station doors need to line up and open at the same time, almost like a choreographed dance. That's why trains on these systems are often equipped with automatic train control systems that ensure they stop at precisely the right spot every time. Once the train is properly aligned, the onboard computer communicates with the platform doors, ensuring both sets open in perfect sync. It's one of those things that happens in just a few seconds, but takes serious engineering to pull off consistently. Of course, machines aren't perfect, and emergencies happen. That's why subway doors are also designed to be overridden manually in case of power failure or technical issues. Somewhere near each door, often hidden behind a panel or marked clearly with a red handle, is a manual release. In the event of a power failure, this can be used by staff or in some cases by passengers during emergencies to open the door. On older systems, the driver or conductor can override door locks from the control cabin. And yes, emergency door opening systems have their own set of safety checks to make sure they aren't triggered by accident or used irresponsibly. Trains also have interlock systems, meaning that when the train is in motion, the doors can't be opened, even manually. It's a layered approach to safety, automated, mechanical, and manual systems all working together to ensure the doors only open when and where they should. Let's not forget all this technology is built to serve people. That means the design of subway doors also considers human behavior. Ever notice that little beeping sound or flashing light right before the doors close? That's a warning system for passengers. The idea is to give just enough notice to step away from the door or hop on board quickly without encouraging risky behavior like squeezing through at the last second. So next time you're stepping into a metro or subway car and the doors open with that familiar whoosh, take a second to appreciate what's going on. You're not just walking through a simple sliding panel. You're interacting with a complex, finely tuned system designed for safety, efficiency, and reliability. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.